Welcome to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. Each week, the In-Depth Outdoors staff will take you to North America's top fishing destinations, where we'll fish longer, go further off the beaten path, uncover untapped fisheries in your backyard, and cover more water in search of the biggest fish and the hottest bites. We'll share time-proven tips, introduce new lures, and cutting-edge fish catching techniques. We'll shine a spotlight on overlooked bodies of water and open eyes to underutilized species that feed aggressively and fight hard from hook set to landing net. All this with one goal in mind, to help you catch more fish and have more fun doing it. This is In-Depth Outdoors, brought to you by Lake Master, leading in accuracy, following with success. Thorn Brothers, where real muskie hunters shop. Skeeter Boats, Skeeter gives the hardcore fishermen a boat to match. Be Fish and Tackle, premium quality jigs and soft plastics designed to help you catch more fish. Skeeter Boat Center, your full service Skeeter Boats dealer. Come take a test drive today. Come on. Here he comes. He's only about 45. Oh, what a cool looking fish. That is built for speed, baby. <laughs> there, a girl. Yeah. All right. There we go. Oh, come here, sweetheart. Show me those big old sucker lips. And there's that circle hook right in the corner of the mouth. We're not using your normal J style hook, that, that's loose now, because we don't want to hook these fish deep. We're fishing live bait. You know, anytime you fish a live bait on any species, you risk getting that hook in there real deep. With the circle hook, what happens is it actually slides from inside the mouth out towards the corner, and just about every time you hook one of these up, it's right here. Almost no damage to these fish. And when they're 20, 30, 40, 50 years old, you want to make sure that you can release them in great shape. Come here, sweetheart. Ha ha. You're a guest on In-Depth Outdoors. <laughs> Number one of the morning. You know, there's just no place else. There's just not a species like the sturgeon where you can come out and really match gear and arm strength against a fish. And you know, you might not come out ahead. It's a great fish. I'm gonna put him back. You know, these are real tough fish, but we don't want to abuse them in any way. Again, you know, that fish might be 20 plus years old, and some of these fish, 50 plus years old, is not out of the question. You know, occasionally you hear a guy's catching 120 pounders, so we're going to take real good care of these fish today. There we go. And these fish release so well. You know, it wouldn't surprise me at all if some of these bigger fish are being caught multiple, multiple times. As long as guys take care of them, it won't be an issue. Chris, your turn, buddy. All right, pal. <laughs> Good stuff. I want to get one that jumps, though. You know, when, the, when, you, see, when you see them all around the boat, uh, they'll come up out of the water two, three feet up into the air, and you know, you're talking about a 50-pound fish. To get that high above the water, it's a pretty awesome sight, and I want to get one while I'm fighting it. Oh, there we go. I didn't get a really good look at her, but she came to the surface finally. And you know, folks, we're not fishing in that deep of water. You know, uh, uh, when you're looking for these holes on the Lake Master Chip, everything is relative to the surroundings. The deepest water here, 13 feet. But everything around it's three, four, and five feet deep. We were actually down below these rapids where there's 30, 35, 40 foot of water, and you'd think, oh, that's, that's a, gotta be where these surgeons are gonna be. All we caught were just little guys. So it definitely pays to hop around from hole to hole. And we look on that Lake Master Chip, and, just found the next hole above. We've been here, what, 15, maybe 20 minutes, got two fish, well, one in the boat and another one on the way, maybe, if luck shines on me here. That was a really cool feeling. Oh. I didn't get a look at it when she came up. No, neither did I. You know, I'm fishing an eight foot, this is a St. Croix, medium heavy, it'd be a great bucktail rod for a muskie fisherman out there to kind of get an idea what kind of gear we're fishing with. It's not a real pull keel type, uh, uh, you know, stiff rod. It's got a little give in the tip, but still, it's a real powerful rod. And to see these fish just pull drag, I mean, I've got my drag where, 
you know, it hurts your hands to pull the line out and these fish just do it at will. I wouldn't put a dollar on this one being over 50 inches, which up here on the rainy is, is just an average fish. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Deep sea fishing, northern Minnesota is basically what this is. You know, and for people that aren't familiar with a sturgeon, they're related to the sharks. They don't have a bony skeletal structure. They're actually made up of uh, cartilage. So they're directly related to the sharks. Ugh. This one's got a really bad attitude. Oh, look at that. You got enough net, Chris? I think so, pal. Yes! Nice nice in there. Yes! Got her. <laughs> nice fish. I'm gonna shake a little nice blood fish. back down <laughs> in that arm of mine. <laughs> I don't know that I could like open the door on my uh, car right now. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna go in there with the pliers, and again, we recommend nothing but circle hooks. You see where that fish is hooked yet again. When you fish in the circles, that point slides to the outer part of the lip, and that's where you end up getting them in a spot that's really not gonna hurt them in any way. Come here, girl. There we go. Now that's that circle hook. That tip on that hook just locks it right into the corner of their mouth. Get that out of there. Chris, I'd actually like to see where this one tapes out. I'm just gonna go with 46, Phil. 46, yep, cool. Nice fish. Nice fish. But the truth is, this is not a big Rainy River sturgeon. 46 to 50 inch fish are common here. There we go. And you know, these fish fight real hard. Well, typically you'll have to spend a little bit of time reviving them. That one was in great shape because we hurried, but uh, when you get one of those big fish in the boat, get it out of the net, take a quick picture. Don't just throw it back in the water and let it drift with the current. Make sure it's good and stable. It's got enough kick in its tail to, you know, support itself as it swims off. Chris? You gotta do that. <laughs> I don't care where the next bite comes, the next one's yours, pal. Oh, that's All awesome. Right. Plus, I gotta dry out. <laughs> You've been sturgeon. <laughs> you know, this is a great time to really explain the whole premise of today's show. I was here uh, two weeks ago to the day with Chris Granrud fishing walleyes. And I gotta tell you, we got into some of the best walleye fishing of my life. Lots of 28, 29s, and even 30 inch walleyes. But something that really stuck in my head that day was a fight I had with a great big sturgeon. Fought it for over an hour and a half, actually up to about an hour and 45 minutes, and never saw the fish. And that kind of stuck with me. So uh, once the walleye season closed up here, I got a hold of Chris and said, hey, you want to go do some sturgeon fishing? Neither of us have any experience fishing these monster fish. But that fight and how hard these uh, fish struggled, the length that they went to to stay away from the boat and how much pressure I put on that fish to never see it in over an hour and a half just made me want to come back and give it a try. So that's what we're into today. Big sturgeon on the Rainy River with Chris Grandru, just a couple of novices. You ever done this before, Chris? It's first time, pal. My first time too, well, on purpose. I mean, I've caught them walleye fishing on accident but this is definitely on purpose. Just when you think you just about got these fish licked, they find just an energy reserve. I don't know where it comes from. I mean, I, don't, I haven't fought any other fish in fresh water that has that. You get them to the boat, you got them licked, they're done. These things are the exception. It's a nice sturgeon, pal. That's a nice sturgeon. It's very mad. <laughs> you know, this time of year, Typically, when the uh, sturgeon season's open, the Rainy River's got a lot of current in it, and certainly we're not in slack water by any means right now, but the water's real low this year, which means I'm not fighting as much current as I normally would, and these fish are still just incredible. Oh, that's a big fish. Big fish, pal. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, Chris, you can do it. Come on, Chris, you can do it back. Put her back. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you know, there's that circle hook right in the corner of the mouth where you want to see it. They pop out real easy once you get the angle on it. And the one thing, because these fish are so old, and I'm 
quite confident that a number of these fish could be caught multiple times, uh, the circle hook is really the way to go. Every fish you get, that fish is hooked right in the corner of the mouth. You're not causing any internal damage. A regular hook that the fish will swallow, and then when you set the hook, uh, hook it's going to get hooked real deep. You want to avoid that. So like a two or a three-aught circle hook is really what you want to use. And I'm going to try to pull this thing out so we can get a real good look at her. You know, there's nothing else in fresh water that I've ever fought that will put up a fight like one of these sturgeon. Chris, will you do a real quick measure for me? Yeah. Pull it your weight just a little bit. Oh, 48. Nice. 48 inch right there. <sighs> and they do get a lot bigger here. It's common to hear a guy that's catching 60s and even 70 inch fish. Uh, back she goes. So you come up here and give this a try. You're not going to need a lot of specialized equipment. Uh, a bait casting reel, some braided line. Uh, in the 30 pound plus category, we're actually using 80 pound test braid. We don't want to spend a lot of time fighting these fish. We want to put as much pressure on them as we can in a short period of time so we can get them to the boat while they're still in good condition. Avoid using spinning gear. Your walleye gear will not cut it, but you can go out and get like a 60 or 70 dollar uh, bait caster and an inexpensive seven to eight foot medium to heavy action fiberglass rod will even work great to land these fish quickly. Do I have time for a sandwich? Look at the line go. <laughs> oh man, these are strong. You know, you mentioned earlier about having the right equipment. This is some pretty tough gear and they are still just about overmatching you when they want to go. And that is a tight set drag. <laughs> it's like a stalemate right now. Yeah. Dead locked down, nobody's going anywhere. Wow. <laughs> okay. Other side, huh? <laughs> Woo! The sturgeon dance. Okay, mercy. Are you warm now? Yeah, feeling good. Feeling good. Oh yeah, look at that fish. We own her, we own her. Nice, oh. nice. All right, another good fish. Show us your prize. You know, I could push you and you'd fall right in the net and you wouldn't <laughs> go know. anywhere. I know. <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. I'm gonna slide that net out of there. That's right there, baby. <laughs> That's, That's fun stuff one. right there. You know, I wonder if we're not catching some that have just spawned out. Yeah, you it could know? be. Because Rainy River is really known for some real fat, heavy sturgeon, and some of these have been pretty thin. Pretty thin, but still a pretty darn nice fish for walleye guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I didn't mean thin in a bad way. Oh. I'm not sure we can handle anything any bigger. <sighs> Still plenty of energy too. Whew. What these sturgeon are doing is they're coming along the bottom with these with their suction cup for mouth and they're just picking baits up off the bottom. And what we're seeing on our rod tips is we're just seeing just a little drop in the rod tip. And uh, when you see that little drop in the rod tip and then maybe your rod will load up a little bit, we're immediately setting the hook. So it's not an actual strike, it's much more of a subtle bite. So even though the, these fish are magnificent in size, uh, the bite itself um, is actually fairly subtle and you really need to be uh, keeping a close eye on your rod tip to, uh, to hook up these fish. I'm still a little wore off from that last one. Oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> and then a little bit of that, <laughs> a little bit of that. That was awesome. It was one of those hook sets where you're like, oh, oh yeah. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Is it going to be a giant boulder? Wow! Whoa. <laughs> Come get me if I go through the rapids. I was going to watch you water ski is what I was going to do. Isn't it funny how they do this? They, they'll fight like that and they'll get you to the boat and then it's just a stalemate right underneath the boat. Like they're thinking, what is that? This is serious. She's going to rest a little bit and then I bet you she's going to run off about a hundred foot of line. Yeah. I don't think it's over. Oh, no. 
<laughs> that was a mid 50 inch fish, wasn't it? That's about what it looked like. You know, when it jumped, it was so far behind the boat. Oh, oh yeah, there you yeah. go. She's just got done resting. God, you love I'm out of here. <laughs> you love the burn, feel the burn, feel the burn. This is gonna take some net. Whoa, uh. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> that is a lot of power. Oh, oh that's a that's a big fish. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that guy. I'm coming. You got it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> I can barely pull this thing in a net oh. upstream. Nice. <sighs> I think that's the biggest okay. one yet. Breathe it for the fish and breathe it for us. Nice. <laughs> that's a good time. Right that is a good time. That's a lot of fish. That's a, that's a two guy fish. <laughs> that's I mean, a two man fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this, this is a lot of fish. That might be the biggest fish you ever caught, Chris. There's a lot of fish right there. <laughs> <laughs> He is going to sit down right there. Oh, <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> this is a bruiser. This is absolutely a bruiser. <laughs> Can't really get it over the side. Good thing the side isn't too high. I'm not laughing at All you, right. I'm laughing with you. Oh, <laughs> oh, we'll take it. We'll take it. That's good stuff. Unbelievable good fun. That's good stuff. <laughs> That's what you know when you're doing sturgeon it's battle. It's rain gear, it's sturgeon proof. It oh so my true. goodness. <sighs> okay. At least once in your life, you've got to try this. I guarantee you, smile on your face a week. It won't go away. <sighs> One of the things I just love about this fishing is it's the basics. Hook, line, and sinker. You know, I think we can all relate to that. You know, as kids, that's how we all got started. You know, dad or an uncle or grandpa took us down to the the lake and set us up with you know a, a little hook and a worm and we caught bluegills well this is a lot like that you know just a gob of crawlers on a two watt circle hook out behind the boat you're anchored there's no boat control issues just the fish got a lot bigger holy smokes <laughs> yeah that's no that's no uh, six ounce bluegill is it chris Jumping jelly beans. <laughs> Jumping <the> jelly beans. <gasps> uh oh. Try again. Try again. <laughs> okay. Let's just try to outset her a little bit. That is a lot of fish, Bill. If at first you don't succeed, yes! We got it. Oh. There's my six ounce bluegill right there, huh? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Come here, sweetie. It's awful fortunate for us that they've got that nice little handle right there on their tail. Oh. <laughs> oh. She's just too lively. <laughs> Strong fish. Oh, what a beaut. You know, I'm not gonna say I could catch too many in a day, but we're getting close. <laughs> we're getting close. <laughs> Here we go. And I know she's ready to go. Well, while I'm recovering from that last fight, what I want to do is tell you about a great boat from Skeeter Boats. This is the 1790 Tiller, perfectly applicable for smaller bodies of water like the Rainy River. But tomorrow, we're going to be out testing the dry ride of the 1790 on 250,000 acre Rainy Lake chasing pike. You know, this boat will easily fish three anglers. It's wide open interior, great storage, center rod storage, comes with a 75 horse Yamaha tiller. And uh, for all that boat motor and trailer, Skeeter Boats has this boat for sale this year for between twenty dollars and $22,000. In fact, if you do a little shopping, you'll be able to find dealers that'll have it for you under $20,000. And that's what makes this boat such a great value. Fiberglass performance, incredible design, complete package, right around that $20,000 price tag. It's real hard to beat, and I guarantee you, 
you get this fiberglass boat out in big water, it's going to be one of the better rides you've ever experienced. So check it out. If you're looking for a new boat this year, 1790 Tiller just might be the boat you're looking for. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> it's taking off. <laughs> and she stops. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of a tractor pull where he is <laughs> going until you just lose traction. No. <laughs> stay. Stay. Oh no. <laughs> Oosh. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, sweetheart. It's a good sized fish. Yeah, you don't want to tail grab this one. Oh. Well, I think this is a great fish to end the day here. Uh, the rain that started out real light has been real consistent. Doesn't show any signs of breaking up. And I got to be honest with you, Chris, I don't think I need to catch another sturgeon <laughs> to have a great day. Uh, it's been a phenomenal day. So this is where we're gonna end it. Just one more fantastic. Oh my word. <laughs> oh, rainy river giant. Good grief. Take that. Take that and like it. <sighs> Chris, I wanna thank you for coming out and just taking a day to you know have some fun, do something that we just don't ever do. I think we're going to have to add this to the bucket list oh, every yeah. year. You know, when that walleye season closes, why not come out and stretch the string with one of these fantastic sturgeons? Thank you. I got a free hand. Uh, awesome, Enjoy the man. slime. <laughs> and this big girl and I, we want to thank you for watching this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. We'll see you next week.